Well, let's, uh, let's, let's get in the word, shall we? Um, we'll uh, bring up our friend, Pastor David, and he's going he's gonna to dive in the word with us. So let's do this. Why well, I have used my own podium because I am not as tall as they are. I have to just like center myself on the camera and be like, okay, where am I? I can go here. Yeah, that's good. That's perfect. There you go. So what happened was we were going through Revelation and then we changed it up and we did you know something special last week and then the monks were still coming and I was like, you guys are still coming. And that's oh, that's great. And then so Trent and I have been texting back and forth all week. And second, how came up? You know, how's wireless going to work? And how are we doing Facebook Live? Because you know, they're new to this, I'm new to this. And then I said, Well, we got to talk about something. I said, You know, tell me about your set list and what are you doing. I said, Is there a song that you think would like fit with what's going on? And he said, Oh, we got this song. Uh, I'll, you know, I'll carry you. Is that the title? What's the title? Carry you. Carry you. Yeah, carry you. And so uh, he didn't even give me the lyrics. I had to go out and Google them, find them. And, <laughs> he was, and, and so I said, no, that's perfect. I, I like that. I like that tune. And so I, tried, I was like, well, now i got to find a verse. And there's a lot of verses in the Bible that have carry you or something about being carried. But then I saw this one in Isaiah 46, and I was like, oh, this, this is perfect. And so kind of crafted this whole message just around uh, their, uh, Trent and Shelley's uh, song. Yeah. So if you did get a handout as you walked in, it's Isaiah 46, and it's verses 3 and 4. And it says, listen to me, O house of Jacob, all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been born by me from before your birth, carried from the womb, even to your old age I am he, and to gray hairs I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, I will carry, and will save. Those words are a message from God. Like, a message from God to you. God says, God says, from your birth? No, he says, before your birth. He actually says, I carried you from the womb. Which means, before you ever made a choice. Before you ever said a prayer. He says, even to your old age, even to your gray hairs, God carries us. You know, my youngest son, son, Dermot, every so often, you know, maybe we're out for a walk or we're at an amusement park, and with, with big puppy dog eyes, he says, Dad, will you carry me? And, and he's six, so I said, no, <laughs> no, you're too big. <laughs> like, you're, you're, like, way too heavy, right? And, and I, I knew this day was coming about the only time I can carry him anymore is from the car in the garage to his bed. Like, that's as far as I'm willing to carry him. And it's not true for us, you know, as a child of God. You know, we've asked several of you this week if you've needed anything or uh, if there's any way the church can reach out or help you. And a lot of people have said, you know, we're fine, we're good, we don't need anything. But for the child of God, we're never too blessed. We are never too rich that we still don't need to be carried. God carries us. Like Shelley said, through peaks, through valleys. I mean, you've picked up a child before, right? You've picked up a child. Have you picked up a child? You rocked a baby. You've given a kid a piggyback ride. Uh, Probably if you were out and, and someone just randomly said that you didn't even know, hey, can you hold my baby for a second? You'd probably say yes. Right? Sure, I'll hold your baby. I'm just, you, know, you know, why do we do that? Why do we carry children? Well, I think first, as a dad, I carry children to move them, right? You, to move them. Just my kid is walking too slow. It's just easier to bend down and, and pick him up. You know, we, we can't all walk at the pace of a two-year-old. And I wonder if our Heavenly Father ever does that to me. I mean, he looks behind him and sees me falling behind, and I'm staring at flowers. And he walks behind me, and he scoops me up, and he says, Hey, buddy, I need you to stay with us. I need you to stay with me. I need you to walk with me. God carries us to new places, doesn't he? 
places that we probably never thought we'd go. And just like when a dad might pick us up for a piggyback ride and we would say, ooh, that's fun. I mean, God carries us for fun. God carries us for fun. That's a weird thought, but it's true. I mean, don't you think that God plays with us? God makes us laugh, shows us something silly. I think so. My, my dad uh, used to throw us all up in the air and catch us. I was the oldest, so obviously I was the kid he practiced on. Um, Dad got his technique down perfectly, but only after uh, me. Uh, have you ever had God carry you to something exciting? God carried you to something fun. God carried you to love. Like being tossed in the air. Being carried by God that lifts you higher. It elevates you to a place that you probably couldn't have reached all by yourself. Isaiah chapter 40, very popular passage we read it in times like this. It says, those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. You know, there's another reason that we would get carried, and that's for fellowship. Fellowship with God. You know, when, when we had our very first baby, and I was a brand new dad, never had, did this before, I learned what parents call skin-on-skin -skin contact. Uh, babies love it. Uh, not only do they love it, but doctors say that it improves heart and lung function, that it stabilizes their body temperature, it regulates their blood sugar, and it even transfers healthy bacteria to them. Now, babies will cry in the middle of the night, and it's not because they're always hungry. Sometimes, most of the times, they're just lonely. You know, babies spend months being as close as a heartbeat, and for the very first time, they experience isolation and alone time, and they don't like it. And I don't think our God likes it either. First John 1 says, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. You know, one of the reasons that I think God carries us is simply because he wants to be close, and that should bring us comfort, and being carried brings us comfort. And I think the biggest advantage to God carrying us is the comfort that we get from it. And you think about it. When a child is sad, we hold them. When a child is in pain, we hold them. When they're worried, when they have a bad dream, we hold them. We try to ease a child's pain and worry by drawing in close to them. And then so doing, it's almost as if we're saying, oh, buddy, if I could remove all of this pain from you, and I could take it on myself, I'd do it. God will carry you, and you will be comforted. Your tears will be wiped away. Your burdens lifted. And God will remove the pain that's in your heart. Have you ever been hurting like that? I mean, so much that you had to just ask somebody for a hug. My wife does this. She gets closer and closer and closer, and I'm a stupid man, and I said, what? What? What are you doing? And she says, I want a hug. You know that our Savior has already given us that permission. He's already given us an open invitation for closeness. The God of all comfort tells us that when we are in trouble, that we can come to him. He encourages us to. He desires that we draw close. In Matthew 11, Jesus says, come to me. All who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You and I, we need that rest. We need that closeness from our Heavenly Father. You know when something terrible happens in your life, and you're preparing, because you see it, and you're saying, I'm going to walk through pain right now. People will come around you, and they'll ask, They'll say, what do you need? Or they'll say, just, just let us know if you need anything. You know, you reach out and let us know if you need anything. My first response, my gut instinct, what I would want to tell them is, I need to be carried. That's what I need. I need to be carried. When accidents happen, when cancer appears, when the weather goes bad, when the floodwaters rise, and when death steals away those people that we love, 
the world that we live in is filled with sin and with darkness. And those forces, they are united in a sole purpose to accomplish only one thing, to take you away from your father. I know life is hard, and God does too. And he sees all the hardships that we walk through, and he sees these times of discouragement. He sees these moments when we're overwhelmed. In fact, Jesus understands our pain because he experienced pain. He knows the loss of a loved one. He knows emptiness. He knows the abandonment that is felt when friends leave us. And Jesus once stood even on a hillside, and he wept tears for a nation that was suffering. We're in a hurting nation right now. And I know our God wishes nothing more than to carry us. And perhaps that's what he's been waiting for, for you, to go to him and admit defeat, admit helplessness. But I think also realizing that as a hurt nation, it's our responsibility to bring light to the world. It's our responsibility to continue to extend grace and extend love. Because during these times, it's really easy to be selfish It's easy to take all the bread. It's easy to take all the diapers. It's easy to take all the toilet paper, all the hand sanitizer, all the top ramen for myself. What are you guys making for dinner? That sounds like a terrible combination of things. (laughs) The world's message is survival of the fittest. The world's message is to look out for number one. And when the world is hurting, we become insensitive to others. You know, they say, Hurting people hurt people. But the mission of the church, Jesus' church, is every member is a minister. God calls us a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. You and I can help hurting people. You and I can extend grace. You and I can learn to carry someone else. Author of Science and Medicine, Thomas Brown, He said, by compassion, we make others' misery our own. And you know, sometimes the way God carries us is by working through the compassion of others. In times like this, we can be frustrated. We can throw up our hands and say, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. What did Jesus do? He gave himself. He gave up himself. He drew the whole world into him in one giant hug, and he took away the pain. Christ gave all himself to me, and so I need to give all of myself to him. You know, a very beautiful passage that nobody ever memorizes, nobody preaches on, and for the most part, we read it, and we just go on to the next is Matthew chapter 9, verse 36. It says, when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them. Jesus saw the blind, he saw the crippled, he saw the broken, he saw the diseased, he saw the dying. I don't know where you are this morning. I don't know what you're feeling or how you're doing. You might be one of the people we called this week and you said everything is fine. If you're fine this morning, if you're healthy, if you're well, begin to call those people that you love. Call your neighbors. Go through your community directory. Go through your church directory. Check in on others. Those people that you would normally talk to in your week, call them on the phone. Have a conversation and lift someone this week. And if you're not fine, and you're hurting, and you feel abandoned, then accept Christ's invitation to draw close. Know that he loves you. Know that he wants to carry you, that he wants to hold you, because he will stand with you in the rain. And when you're hurt, and when there's too much for you to handle, he will also carry you through pain. I want to remind you that uh, Trent and Shelley have a PayPal link attached 
to this live feed. Uh, you can click it now or you can go to it later in the week. It's going to be, it's always there for you. But if you want to send them a love offering and thank them for leading worship for us today, uh, we were blessed by it. And I hope you were blessed by it too. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and being a part of this community. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, we're just so blessed to be able to have an opportunity, have a medium, a way that we can continue to worship and to sing your praises, to love you, and to know that you are with us, that you desire nothing more than to lift us, to carry us. This might be a moment where you are taking us someplace new, not only as a nation, but as a world. This might be a time when you are drawing your children close to you because you want to comfort them. This might be a time that you're drawing us close because you want to extend parts of yourself onto your church and change your church forever. Lord, we walk through this with you. As you extend your love to each of us, we extend grace and love to those around us. May we always find new ways to be the church. May we always find new ways to reach and extend grace. Be with those who are far away. Be with those loved ones that are on our minds and in our hearts. Thank you for friends and family that you continue to extend health to them. Keep your church healthy and well. And we love you for all that you do. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. I'll give you a hug. No, we don't do, we, we can't do hugs. Do an elbow bump. No. Oh, okay. I'll do double elbow bump. There we go. <laughs> well, thank you all for tuning in. Look how short I am. Can't. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Thank you, little fella. Wow. I go back and get a stool to stand on. Um, and uh, again, continue to plug into your community. Um, and when you think of us, pray for us and our journey. Pray for Mother Woods. Um, and that, I think that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Y'all have a good Sunday. Bye. Stay home.